Spain have. Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to more English. But now I'm alone. And now this segment is for beginners. Para los principiantes. But you, ojo, quieto, parao, don't move. Because the things I'm going to do now are designed for beginners, but also for you. Uh, people think that they know English well when the cimiento está muy mal. The foundation is not good. So I recommend that you stay here and watch. And for the next 25 minutes, we will continue English, yes, but we will return to the basics. Always the basics. Lo básico, los fundamentos, lo fundamental. In English, lo digo así, the basics. Los, literalmente, los básicos. The basics, con C S al final, es una palabra griega. Basics, ethics, acoustics, dynamics, ethics. Okay. Ballistics, the basics. And the basics, yes, the basics are the most important aspect of the language of any language, of Spanish, French, German, English. You know, <clears throat> when Ronaldinho, or Ronaldo, or Raul, mucho R aquí, a ver si, or Beckham, every day when they go out to practice in the middle of the week in preparation for the game on Saturday or Sunday, they go on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and they go to the campo de prácticas. They go to the practice field. And every day, they spend five minutes, 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, practicing ball control, simple ball control. The same exercises that children who are 11 years old, con alevines, are practicing too, the basics. In American football, it's the same. When they go for the practice, they practice very basic, fundamental things. The difference between a fantastic football player and a normal, mediocre football player is absolute control of the fundamental aspects of the sport. When it's golf, beautiful swing, control of every movement of the body, and that's learned when you're young, learning the basics. And if you speak, if you speak to the best baila bailarina clásica del mundo, the best classical ballerina in the world, Russian or English, Margot Fontaine, for example, or some of the Russian ballerinas, if you observe them, every day they go to practice holding the bar, lifting their leg in the mirror, practicing the fundamental movements of classical ballet. The natural talent and grace is very important, but the technique, bam, bam, perfection in the technique, and then the natural talent makes you a champion. But you will never be a champion if you don't master the basics. And if you watch football players, professional football players, los futbolistas profesionales, the best, and you will see their secret is normally basic aspects running fast, or being very agile, controlling the ball, receiving a pass, or precision passing, the basic fundamentals. And for English, or German, or French, it's the same. And for Spanish, for me to learn Spanish, my secret in speaking Spanish well is because I can conjugate verbs quickly, correctly, with no problem. Ayer fui. Ayer fuiste, ayer fue él, fuimos, fuiste, fueron. Comí, comiste, comieron, comiste, comiste, comi, comieron. All right? Vete, no te vayas. Váyase, no se vaya. Idos, no os vayáis. Váyanse, no se vayan. Usted, tú, plural, singular. Many different ways. Bam, bam, bam. The mechanics of the language, la mecánica. Otra vez como la básica, lo básico. The basics, the mechanics, the dynamics of the language. If you want to speak English dynamically, you have to control the basics. Okay, the basics. 
Is this a microphone? Yes, it is. Is this a cup of water? Yes, it is. Is this a book? Yes, it is. Is Spain a country? Yes, it is. Is Spain a big country or a small country? Well, it's a big country. How many people are there in Spain? There are 45 million people in Spain. Is Brazil a big country or a small country? It's a big country. How many people are there in Brazil? Perdón, <clears throat> uh, What's the population? Pop, pew, pew, pew. What's the population of Brazil? The population of Brazil is 185, I think. 185 million people. Is Brazil bigger or smaller than Spain? Poof, Brazil is bigger than Spain. Is Brazil a little bigger or a lot bigger than Spain? Well, in my opinion, Brazil is a lot bigger in area and in population. What rank is Spain? Well, Spain is number 25 or 26 or 27 in the world in population. How many people are there in Spain? There are 45 million. How many people are there in Brazil? There are 185 million. Okay, how many times more? Well, there are five times, almost four or five times more people in Brazil than in Spain. So Spain is a lot smaller than Brazil in population. And Spain is a lot smaller than Brazil in area too. But Spain is very important in gross domestic product. Producto interior bruto is practically the same with Brazil. So Spain is a very strong country. Smaller than Brazil, yes, but as strong. Now, is Spain as big as China? No, it's not. Is Spain as big as India? No, it's not. Is Spain as big as Germany? No, it's not. Is Spain as big as Russia? No, it's not. Is this microphone as big as this table? No, it's not. Is my right hand as big as the book? No, it's not. As big as, as strong as. Do you play the guitar as well as Andres Segovia? Probably you don't. Uh, do you play the piano as well as Arthur Rubinstein? Probably you don't. Is there as much water in this cup as in the Mediterranean Sea? Well, no, there, no, there isn't. Is there as much water in the Mediterranean as in the Atlantic Ocean? No, there isn't. Is there as much money in your bank as in the Federal Reserve in the United States? No, there isn't. Is there as much flour in your house as in a flour factory? No, there isn't. Are there as many flowers in Spain as in Germany? Probably there are. Okay. There is, there are as much as many. Okay. Is this table as big as your house? No, it's not. Is this book as big as the Quixote? No, it's not. Is this microphone as big as your house? No, it's not. Is your English as good as mine? Do you speak English as well as I do? No, you don't. All right. Do you know as many verbs as I do? No, you don't. Do you speak English as often as I do? Probably you don't. Do you speak English as much as I do? Probably you don't. Uh, do you drink as much water as I do? Well, maybe you do. Are there as many trees in Spain as in Germany? No, there aren't. Are there as many trees in Spain as in Brazil? No, there aren't. Is there as much olive oil in Spain, as in Italy? Yes, there is. In fact, in my opinion, there's more. Olive oil in Spain than in Italy. Is there as much olive oil in Syria as in Spain? No, there isn't. Is there as much sunlight in Spain as in Morocco? No, there isn't. Lutesol, luz solar? In Spain, Morocco? There's more sunlight, in my opinion, in Morocco than in Spain. So in Spain, there isn't as much, there isn't as much, there isn't as much, there isn't as much. There isn't as much sunlight in Spain as in Morocco. But there are more people in Spain than Morocco. So there aren't as many people in Morocco as in Spain. Let's make some comparisons. Let's make some comparisons between Spain and Morocco, okay? Morocco is in the north of Africa. Spain is in the south of Europe. 
Now, they almost touch in the Strait of Gibraltar. There's a small body of water that passes between Morocco and Spain. On one side, you have Algeciras and Gibraltar, and on the other side, you have Tangier and Ceuta. And that little area is called El Estrecho, the Strait. Suena como recto, línea recta, pero es strait escrito, no hay GH en medio. The Strait of Gibraltar, the Strait of Gibraltar, is what divides Spain from Morocco. Now, in Morocco, the people speak Arabic and quite a few speak good French. And some people speak Spanish in the north of Morocco, Spanish Morocco. And of course, there are two cities in the north of Morocco, or the north of that land area that belonged to Spain, that are Spanish territories. Ceuta and Melilla belong to Spain. They don't belong to Morocco. And in Ceuta and Melilla, people normally speak Spanish, although some people speak uh, Arabic. Now, Let's make some comparisons between Spain and Morocco. Which country is bigger? Well, in area, in uh, extension, Morocco is bigger than Spain. Yeah, Spain isn't as big as Morocco. In area, Morocco is bigger than Spain. In area. Spain isn't as big as Morocco. Spain isn't as big as Morocco. Morocco is bigger than Spain. And in population, the opposite. Spain is bigger than Morocco in population, which means that Morocco isn't as big as Spain in population. There are more people in Spain than in Morocco. There are more people in Spain than in Morocco, which means, lo cual significa, which means that there aren't as many people in Morocco as in Spain. Veamos esto. There are more people in Spain than in Morocco. There aren't as many people in Morocco as in Spain. Okay? In fact, <clears throat> if you want to say it a, th a tercera via de expresar lo mismo, there are fewer people in Morocco than in Spain. There are fewer people. Fewer, porque es people is plural. Si no, yo diría less. Ya lo veremos más adelante. There are fewer people in Morocco than in Spain. There aren't as many people. Se suele decir más eso. Curioso, al hacer la compara las comparaciones, tanto como, usamos más no tanto como que menos que. Hay menos gente en Mar Marruecos que en España. Hay menos gente en Marruecos que en España. Está correctísimo. En inglés y en español. There are fewer people in Morocco than in Spain. Pero curiosamente se dice más, no hay tanta gente en Marruecos como en España. Se dice más así. There aren't as many, entrando por lo negativo. There aren't as many people in Morocco as in Spain. Now, Morocco and Spain, olive trees, olivos, árboles, olive trees. Clearly, in my opinion, there are more olive trees in Spain than in Morocco. Probably, no estoy seguro, but I think, probably there are more olive trees in Jaén, only in the province of Jaén, than in all of Morocco. And in Morocco, there are a lot of olive trees. It's true. But in Jaén, it's incredible how many olive trees there are. So, there aren't as many olive trees in Morocco as in Spain. Cuando digo as, aunque sea as much or as many, or simplemente as, en la segunda parte también quiero ir as. There aren't as many olive trees in Morocco as in Spain. In fact, in my opinion, there aren't as many olive trees in all of Morocco as in the province of Jaén only. Yes, it's true. Now, Spain, Morocco, olive oil, aceite. Well, probably, if there aren't as many olive trees in Morocco as in Spain, then probably there isn't as much olive oil in Morocco as in Spain. Probably there is more olive oil. There's more olive oil in uh, Spain than in Morocco. There is less olive oil in uh, Morocco than in Spain. Tres formas de decir lo mismo. Okay, vamos a repasar para decir la, mis la misma idea de que hay más aceite de oliva en España que en, en Marruecos. Hay menos aceite de oliva en Marruecos que en España. No hay tanto aceite de oliva allá que acá. Okay, there is more olive oil. Olive, olive oil se enlaza. Y la uva de olivo 
olive oil, olive oil. There's more olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. Fijaos en cómo se dice. Y además es importante, si vais a hablar con extranjeros sobre vuestra patria, España, es muy posible que en algún momento habléis, habléis de aceite de oliva, porque es un producto autóctono muy importante. Spain is the number one producer in the world of olive oil. So, there's more olive oil in Spain than in Morocco. There's less olive oil in Morocco than in Spain. Y la tercera vía, there isn't as much olive oil in Morocco as in Spain. Why? Probably there isn't as much olive oil in Morocco as in Spain because there aren't, pluralizando ahora, there aren't as many olive trees in Morocco as in Spain. And I think it's true. Okay, so we made some comparisons. People, olive oil, and olive trees. More, factories, plural, factories is plural. Contable. One, two, three. Se pueden contar las fábricas. Are there more factories in Spain or in Morocco? Well, I think it's true. I think you agree with me that there are more factories in Spain than. Cuando dice more, cuando digo more, quiero ir than. When, cuando digo, oigo as al principio, quiero as al final. There are more factories in Spain than in Morocco. There are fewer Aquí no digo less, porque es plural. There are less factories, plural. There are less, aquí digo, you know, there are fewer factories. Me estás, you're, you're, you're confusing me, me estás confundiendo también. There are fewer factories in Morocco than in Spain. There are more factories in Spain than in Morocco. There aren't as many factories in Morocco as in Spain. Okay, sand, sand. Sand, when you go to the desert, there's a lot of sand. When you go to the beach, you have sand in your hair, in your ears, in your eyes, on your feet, on your body, a lot of sand, mucha arena. Now, there's a lot of sand in Spain. There's a lot of sand in Spain. But there's even more sand in Morocco, yes. So, there's more sand in Morocco than in Spain. There's less sand in Spain than in Morocco. There isn't as much, there isn't as much, there isn't as much sand in Spain as in Morocco. Okay? Yeah. What about palm trees? What is a palm tree? You can find palm trees in Madrid, but not many. You can find palm trees in Toledo, but not many. You can find Palm trees in Seville, in Córdoba. Quite a few, hay eh? bastantes. Palm tree is una palmera. It's a tree that you find in the tropical areas and in the deserts, too. Are there more palm trees in Spain or in Morocco? Well, probably, there, no, probably no, for sure, for sure. There are more palm trees in Morocco than in Spain. There are fewer palm trees in Spain than in Morocco. Tercera vía, there aren't, there aren't as many palm trees in Spain as in Morocco. Lo tenéis bien, pero voy a seguir RQR con esta forma durante esta clase hasta que se os quede consolidadísimo. Okay, Spain and Morocco, Spain and Morocco, sunlight, luz solar. Well, there's a lot of sunlight in Spain. Spain is a sunny country. Come to sunny Spain. It's a tourist promotion. Come to sunny Spain. There's a lot of sunlight in Spain, it's true, especially compared to Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, Sweden. Of course, there's a lot of sunlight. But there is even more sunlight, even more in Morocco. There's more sunlight in Morocco than in Spain. There's more sunlight because Morocco is very close to the Sahara Desert. In Spanish, el Sahara. In English, Sahara. It's un H. The Sahara Desert. El H se pronuncia, eh? Se aspira. There's a lot of sand, of course, and a lot of sunlight. Perennial, permanent sunlight, practically, in the Sahara Desert. And Morocco is near, very near, 
the Sahara Desert. It's between the Atlas Mountains. Over the Atlas, you have the Sahara Desert. So, there isn't as much sunlight in Spain as in Morocco. There is less sunlight in Spain as in Morocco. There is more sunlight in Morocco than in Spain. Water, water. Well, in Spain, there isn't much water. Spain has a chronic shortage, escasez. De hecho, diría scarcity. Hay dos palabras en inglés para escasez. Scarcity, que tiene la misma raíz que la palabra escaso, scarce. Y eso es para una escasez crónica. Y en España sí hay una escasez en ciertas áreas. En muchas áreas de España es que falta agua desde hace tres milenios. Es normal en el centro, en las dos castillas y en Andalucía un poco. Yes, there is a scarcity of water. Cuando es más temporal, este año hay menos, hay una escasez, unas defi, un déficit más bien. Eso se dice shortage. Now, in Spain, in Old Castile, or in Castile León nowadays, and in Castile La Mancha, and in Extremadura, perhaps Andalusia, there is a chronic scarcity of water. Okay, so there isn't much water in Spain. Uh, there's a lot of water in the north of Spain, in the Basque Country, Cantabria, Asturias, Galicia, perhaps along the Pyrenees. Uh, there isn't a water problem, and in Catalonia, not too much. Uh, but there is, a, in general, a scarcity of water in Spain, so there isn't much water. There isn't much, there isn't much. También podría decir there isn't a lot of water. Pero puesto que quiero expresar la idea de escasez, que no hay mucha, prefiero la palabra much en este caso que a lot of. There isn't much water in Spain. Okay, there isn't much. But there is even less in Morocco. The situation in Morocco is even worse than the situation in Spain. Yes, it's even worse. There isn't much. There isn't much water in Morocco. In fact, there is less water in Morocco than in Spain. Uh, there is more water in Spain. There isn't much water in Spain, but there is more. There isn't much. Aquí much y more. Estoy usando los aquí en distinta forma. There isn't much water in Spain, but there is more water in Spain than in Morocco, which means there is less water in Morocco than in Spain, which means, finalmente, tercera vía, there isn't as much. There isn't as much water in Morocco as in Spain. Now, Bedouins, or bueno, vamos a ver, belly dancers. Bailadoras o la danza del vientre. Belly dancers. Now, there are more belly dancers in Morocco than in Spain. There aren't as many belly dancers in Spain as Morocco. Now, flamenco dancers. Bailadoras, flamenco dancers. Clearly, there are more flamenco dancers in Spain than in Morocco. There are fewer flamenco dancers in Morocco than in Spain, which means there aren't as many flamenco dancers in Morocco as in Spain. And English teachers? Probably uh, because the population in Spain is greater than in Morocco, and the educational level is a little higher, maybe. Probably there are more English teachers in Spain than in Morocco. Uh, there are fewer English teachers in Morocco than in Spain. So, clearly, there aren't as many. There aren't, there aren't. Fijaos, por enésima vez os digo que aren't, la contracción de are not, es una sola sílaba en inglés, aren't. There aren't as many English teachers in Morocco as in Spain. And good English teachers? No way. Good television English teachers? Oh, no. There are more television English teachers in Spain than in Morocco. In Morocco, I think there aren't any. Okay. So, clearly, there aren't as many. Si le decías que hay. Si hay, there aren't as many English teachers, television English teachers in Morocco as in Spain. Aquí en Aprende Inglés TV con Baugan. We're the best, the best English teachers. And if there are English teachers on television, Morocco, they are not as good. Eso os lo aseguro. They aren't as good as the English teachers on television here in Spain for you. Eso sí, si estudiáis. So you need to study, okay? So, 
It's been a pleasure today on another show, another program of uh, Vaughan and Vivo. And I want to invite you to study English as much as possible, for, for as much as possible, and to uh, come back tomorrow to see us again or later today if we repeat this program. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay? And see you very soon. Bye-bye. What's the missing word? Do you know the right answer? Chop chop! The correct answer is... A. There aren't any hens. Welcome back. Welcome to a new program. Yes, I'm glad to see you here again because if you're here, then I know that you are becoming a regular student. Un alumno habitual, asiduo, alumno que todos los días sintoniza aquí con nosotros en Aprende Inglés TV y específicamente en este caso mi programa Vaughan en Vivo. And I'm very honored, me honra. I'm honored to have you here. I'm very glad you're watching. And, um, I really, honestly want you to uh, benefit from this program, which means I'm going to do the very best I can. Uh, it's not easy to teach English in such a way that different levels can benefit simultaneously. I try to teach at an intermediate level, dynamically, and sometimes it depends on the students I have with me. Some of them seem to answer every question correctly. Some of them don't answer any correctly. But that's good because it demonstrates to you and illustrates many aspects of the language that probably you need to attend to as well. Uh, to speak a second language perfectly, when well, no, perfectly is impossible, forget it. Don't aspire to perfection. It's not a realistic aspiration. I've been studying English, no, English, perdón, I've been studying Spanish. I've been working on Spanish all my life, and I still don't speak Spanish perfectly. I can communicate perfectly, but I can't speak perfectly. It's interesting. Speaking a language, including your own language, is not necessarily connected to your ability to communicate. In Spanish, when you speak your own language, or if you're watching from Valencia, in Valenciano, or in Catalan, or in Gallego, or in Vasco, or in any language, <clears throat> but especially in your native language, you have eloquent days in which you seem to say everything very well, and you have less eloquent days in which it seems to you that, Oye, no me explico bien hoy, es que no doy ni una hablando en mi propio idioma. And so, <clears throat> it's clear that um, the knowledge of a language is not a free ticket to good communication. You know Spanish, se supone, perfectly. You knew Spanish practically perfectly when you were five years old. You could speak Spanish with more agility than I can speak Spanish now, after studying it for thousands of, year, of uh, hours. But the fact that you know Spanish and can speak it fluently doesn't mean you're a good communicator. Are you capable of communicating with people and with groups in such a way that the people listen to you and act and react in line with what you want? Good communication skills are not easy to acquire. Adquirir. In español, el verbo adquirir tiene una D al principio. Adquirir. En inglés no tiene ninguna D. Empieza por C-A-C-Q. Acquire. Acquire, acquire. It's not easy to acquire good communication skills in your own language. So imagine how difficult it can be in a second language. Uh, so, but remember, you're never going to speak English perfectly. But you're perfectly capable of communicating perfectly if you 
master three elements. Three elements. Element number one, listening comprehension. You must gain an ability to understand well. Ahí sí admito perfeccionista. Si quieres, si quieres ser perfeccionista, sélo con la comprensión auditiva. Okay? I give you permission to be a perfectionist, but only with the ear, because the rest is impossible. Second essential element is confidence when speaking. Talk, speak, express yourself, and don't be afraid. Trata de evitar o de desterrar ese, ese concepto de sentido ridículo que campa sus anchas en este país. Okay, please try to find a way to eliminate the problem of miedo esténico, sentido ridículo, la vergüenza, etc., because it's not conducive to fluent speech. And it's, oh, it's, it's un problema del coco, no es un problema del, del idioma. No. I have met many people que destrozan mi idioma, que lo hacen una, hacen una carne, carnicería auténtica a mi pobre idioma, dando patadas al diccionario uno tras otro, pero se expresan en inglés. Y yo prefiero eso a los que se quedan callados por miedo a hablar. So, if I have to take the two extremes, which extreme? I prefer el cachapurrea, un inglés macarrónico sin miedo. I prefer that extreme to the other person who suffers paralysis by analysis. Analizando todo hasta quedar paralítico. Parálisis por, por excesivo análisis. So, I prefer that. So, I prefer that. That's the second element. First element is your ear. Second element, confidence when speaking. Confidence, it's a psychological element. Don't be afraid. Talk. And in order to gain that ability, talk to the wall if necessary. Hello, wall. How are you today? You look nice today. You look better than yesterday. Inventando lo que sea o preparando una, todo una, un speech para la pared. Practice. And the third element <coughs> is agility. Agilidad. Siempre voy a la palabra ágil. Agilidad. Agility with the basic grammar. Agilidad con las, los aspectos, los elementos que uno ve en el libro de principiantes, número uno, y en el libro número dos para preintermedio. Esos dos libros contienen el 90% de lo que necesitas para hablar un inglés precioso. Yes. Do you understand me when I speak to you? Do you understand me when I try to explain to you what is necessary to speak English well? Many people, when they listen to me, they say, Richard, I love listening to you speak. And I say, why? Because I understand you perfectly. You're so eloquent. You speak with such impact. And I say, ¿Y me entendéis a la perfección? I said, yes. You understand me perfectly, or you. You understand me perfectly because I'm using easy, basic English when I speak. And you say, ¿Cómo es posible que a este le entiendo a la perfección? Y veo una película y no entiendo nada. Y sin embargo, este que le entiendo a la perfección también habla de forma elocuente e impactante. Moraleja. Tanto en español como en inglés, si quieres ser elocuente e impactante, lo puedes hacer con los verbos y las construcciones del libro 1 y 2 para principiantes. You can do it. It's not difficult to be a good speaker with basic structures. You don't need to worry about esoteric, rebuscadas cosas. Don't. Basic structures is all you need. But you need to have la agilidad de un malabarista con esos bas estructura básica. Con un malabarista con solo tres pelotas mantenidas en el aire. Y con eso. Uno puede incluso impresionar con los juegos malabares que hace, con solo tres pelotas al aire. ¿Ok? So remember that. Keep it simple. It's not necessary to complicate your life with so many verbs and constructions. Make sure that you have agility. Eso es elemento número tres. Listening comprehension. Confidence when speaking. Agility with the basic structure. And the basic structure is no more than... 30 verbs and three verb tenses, present, past, and future. But learn it well, those. And then you can be very good and you can speak like me. 
I'm using vocabulary and verbs that you understand. You say, a este le entiendo a la perfección. But at the same time, I am eloquent and I speak with impact. So you don't need to have an opulent grammar, un gramati, una gramática, un léxico opulento, para hablar de una forma eficaz e impactante. Remember that in Spanish too, in every language. Okay, so I have two friends here with me who I think you know. You've met on previous one or two classes in the past. I have Nacho on my left and Julian on my right. Two guys, okay, two good friends. Nacho, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, okay. And you? I'm tired. Right. Ask me why I'm tired. Are you tired? Ask me why. Ah, why are, are you tired? Sorry. I'm tired of giving sermons, sermoneando, simpre. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Aren't you? <laughs> do you think the people on, in, at home are tired of my sermons? No, I, mean, I don't think so. You don't think so? Yes. Are my sermons interesting or boring? Uh, I think it's interesting. Do you understand them? Yes, I, I, do? I do. Do you understand them perfectly? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay, and, and are they eloquent? Yes, you are. In very simple English? Yeah. So it's possible to be eloquent with very simple English. Uh, All right, good. Yeah. Okay, ask Julian if he's happy to be here. Uh, Julian, are you happy to be here? Yes, I am happy. Okay, good. Now, ask Julian what his wife's name is. Volviendo a un tema de antaño. Julian, what's, uh, what is uh, the name of your wife? Está bien dicho, pero se, se, casi siempre se dice, what's your wife's name? What's your wife's name? Perdona. What's your wife's name? Yo estoy haciendo dos contracciones aquí. What's your yeah. wife's name? Repeat. What's your wife's name? Her name is Monica. Okay, ask me what my no wife's name is. Sorry. <laughs> ask me what my wife's name is. Ah, uh, what's uh, your uh, wife's, uh, wife's name? Is. My wife? No. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no me los al final. What's, what's uh, your wife's name? My wife's name is Fernanda. Ask me what my daughter's name is. What's your daughter's name? name? My daughter's name is Andrea. Ask me what my son's wife is. Well, my son's wife. <laughs> I mean, my son is not married. Ask me what my son's name is. Uh, what, what is the, the name of your son? Escúchame. Escucha esto y aprende. Ask me what my daughter's name is. What's your daughter's name? Her name is Andrea. Ask me what my wife's name is. Uh, what's uh, your uh, wife's name? Good. My wife's name is Fernanda. Ask me what my uncle's name is. What's your uncle's name? His name is Jack. Ask me what my father's name was. What's, uh, what was? What was uh, your father's name? His name was Tom. Mm -hmm. Ask me what my mother's name was. Wha uh, what was your mother's name was? <laughs> what was your mother's name? Okay, you're nervous because you're on television. <laughs> uh, her mm. name, my mother's name was Mary Jo. Uh -huh. Mary Jose? Mary Jo. Ask me what my sister's name is. What's your sister's name? Names. ¿Y por qué tienes la tentación de añadir is? What's your sister's <laughs> name? Repeat. This is for you. <laughs> What's your sister's name? Uh, my sister's name is Nancy. Uh -huh. Okay, my sister's name is Nancy. And uh, ask me what... Oh, I've lost all my things. <laughs> ask, me, <laughs> ask me what my dog's name is. And what is your dog's, dog's, dog's. dog's name? Name. Name. My dog's name is uh, Spot. Okay. Well, I don't have a dog. But um, ask me what my brother's name is. What is the... What's wh your what's, brother's? Wh what is your brother's name? What is your brother's Escuche name? Escuche me. Yes. What's... What? Eso significa what is. De acuerdo? Yes. What's your brother's... Con apóstrofe S porque es genitivo sajón. El nombre de tu hermano. What's your brother's name? name? Repeat. What's your brother's name? Okay, I don't have a brother. I only have a sister. Ask me what my cousin's name is. What's uh, your cousin's name? Cousins. Cousin's name. 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 My cousin's name is Karen. Okay, my cousin's name is Karen. Ask me where she lives. Uh, where she lives? Where does she live? Where does she live? Live. Live. Ooh, we have a lot live? of work, Julian. Where, Where does, does she live? Live. Live. She lives in Texas. Ask me what city she lives in. What city she lives in? Falta el verbo auxiliar otra vez. Where city do she lives? What city? 
What city does she live? Does she live in? She lives in Houston. Ask me if she smokes. Uh, is she smoke? Si están fumando ahora, no tengo ni idea. Mm. Ask me if she smokes. Smokes. Is does? Does is does she? Does she smoke? Smoke. Smoke. Uh, repeat the question. That's she. Does she smoke? That's she smoke. Does. Does. Esto. Does. No, that's. Does, does she smoke? Repeat. Does she smoke? No, she doesn't. Ask me if she lives in a big house. Does she live in a small house? A small house? I don't think so. I think she lives in a big house. Ask me if she, ask me if she travels a lot in her job. Does she uh, travel? Uh, travel in his job? In my, in his job or in uh, her in job? In her job. Uh, no, she doesn't. Ask me if she lives alone. Uh, does she does. does she live alone? Live. Does she live alone? Hmm. Long. No te oigo bien. Does she live long? Long, no. Alone. Alone. Uh, no, she doesn't. She lives with her husband. Ask me if Nacho lives alone. Uh, does? Does uh, Nacho live alone? Alone. 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 Yo siento tan solo. I feel so alone. Does she live alone? Does Nacho live alone? I don't know. Do you live alone? Yes, uh, I live alone. You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, ask me if my sister lives alone. Does your sister live alone? Live. Live alone? No, she doesn't. She lives with her husband. Ask me if my uncle lives alone. Does your uncle live alone? Alone. 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 Uh, yes, he does. Okay. Ask me if he lives in Oklahoma. And does uh, he live in Oklahoma? No, he doesn't. Ask me if he lives in Kansas. Does uh, he live in Kansas? No, he doesn't. Ask me where he lives. Uh, where he lives? Y por qué has abandonado does? Oh. <laughs> where, where does he? Where does he live? Sin la S al final. He live. Where does he live? Where does he live? He lives in Texas. Ask me if he lives in Dallas. Does, uh, does, does, no, does. does he live in Dallas? No, he doesn't. Houston. Uh, does he live in? Does. Does he live in Houston? No, he doesn't. Ask me what city he lives in. Uh, what? Uh, what uh, does city? What city? What city does uh, he live? Live. He live in. Live Only in. Al final. Live in. What Good. City, repeat. What city does he live in? No, it's does. It's does. Does. What city does he live in? Mm -hmm. He lives in San Antonio. All right. And ask me how old he is, Nacho. How old is he? He's 84 years old. Mm -hmm. Ask me if he's in good health. Uh, has Ask me if he is. It bears to me. Ask is, me if is he, he is in good health. Is he in good in good health? In good care? health. Yes. <laughs> Repeat. Is he in good health? In good health. Not the best in the world. No. Mm -hmm. Lately, no. He's not in good health. Ask me if I'm worried about my uncle. Are you worried about your uncle? A little bit. Mm -hmm. Ask me if I like my uncle. If you if ask me if I like my uh -huh. uncle. Do you like your uncle? Very much. Mm -hmm. uh, ask me if he is married. Uh, is he married? Not now. Ask me if he is divorced. Is he divorced? No, he's not. Ask me if he is a widow. A widower, perdona. Joy, is, is he a widower? Widower. Widower? Widow is mujer. Yeah. Widower is viudo. Uh, yes, he is. Yeah. Ask me if he lives in the city. Does he live in the city? City? In yes. the city. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't live in the city. Yeah. Uh, ask me how far he lives from San Antonio. How far does he live from San Antonio? Uh, he lives about 20 kilometers from S San Antonio. Ask me if he lives on a farm. Does he live on a farm? No, he doesn't. Yeah. Ask me if he lives on a ranch. Does he live on a ranch? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Ask me how many hectares he has. How many actors does he... Actores? No, hectares. Actors. Escucha. Ask me how many hectares. Hectares. Hec, 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 hectares. Hectares. How many hectares does he... Does he has? Does he care? Does he have? Good. 
<laughs> he has uh, 40 hectares. Mm -hmm. 40 hectares. Okay. Ask me if he has any animals on the land. Does he have any animals on the... On the land? On the land. Yes, he does. Oh. Ask me how many animals. How many animals does he, the, does he have? Good. Fija, fíjate en el does, 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 mm. does. Es tercera persona singular en las preguntas. Ok. El del presente. Uh, he, I, he has, uh, I think, he has four cows, mm. two horses, and five dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm. And uh, ask me if he lives there permanently. And does he live there permanently? Oh, he lives. That, does he live uh, there permanently? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, ask me if he has any friends near his ranch. Does he any friend in yeah, friend? Verbo, lo has does amo. he uh, has? Does he have any friends uh, near near to the ranch? Or ranch. Ranch. Near the ranch. Near the ranch. Uh, yes, he does. Yes, mm -hmm. he does. And uh, ask me if he comes to Spain very often. Does he come to Spain? Does okay. he come to Spain very often? Very often? Very often. Very is con no? Very often. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't. Uh -huh. Ask me how often he comes to Spain. How often does he come to Spain? Never. Oh. Ask me if he has ever come to Europe. Does he ever? Uh, uh, uh. Ahora estoy remontando en su pasado hasta no, presente. No. Ask me if he has. Have, e have he ever been? Tercera persona. Ask me if he has ever come to Europe. Has he ever come, come. Um, a Europa to to Europe? Uh, Punto. Repeat. Has he? Has he ever come to Europe? Never. Ask me why. Why has he ever never come? No. <laughs> Prefiero never que came. niegue sobre el verbo auxiliar. Why hasn't he? Uh, why hasn't he come? Ever come? Ever come. Why hasn't he ever come to, to Europe? Okay. I don't know. He's never had the occasion. All right. Mm -hmm. Ask me if he speaks Spanish. Does he speak Spanish? Yes. He speaks a little Spanish. Ask me why. Uh, why does he speak uh, Why does he speak Spanish? Okay. Uh, because uh, many years ago, mm -hmm. he had a lot of business with Mexico. Mm -hmm. Ask me what kind of business he had. With Mexico, uh, what kind of business uh, he had? Did he have? Did he had? Uh, did he ke? Did he had? Uh -uh. Did, did he have? Okay. With Mexico, irrigation business, riego. Okay, agricola, mm -hmm. irrigation business. Mm -hmm. Okay, ask if he has an irrigation business. Uh, does he have an uh, irrigation? Irrigation, irrigation, yeah. Business. Irrigation business. Uh, now he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ask me how many years he had an irrigation business. How many years uh, did he well, did he have an irrigation business? Irrigation. Ir irrigation business. He had an irrigation business for about forty years. Mm -hmm. Ask me if it was a successful business. Did it was a successful business? Did it was or was it? Was it? <laughs> was it? Was it a successful su successful uh, business? Ah, uh, yes, it was. Escucha la pronunciación. Successful. Successful business. Business. All right. Yes, it was. Okay, okay now, but returning to Julian, okay. we need Good. to finish the story. <laughs> okay, okay, te dejo en paz un poquito. Oh, thank eh? you. Now, does Monica smoke? Your wife? Does she smoke? Uh, no, she isn't. Does, does, does she smoke? No, she's not. Escucha. Does no. she smoke or doesn't? She does or she doesn't? She doesn't. Okay. Now, does Monica live with you? Uh, yes, uh, she, does. she does. Good. Does Monica have blonde hair? Uh, no, she does. She does. She doesn't. She doesn't. doesn't. Uy. Yes. Sabes, Julian, en tu caso tenemos que remontar a cero y construir. Remontar a cero y construir. Okay. Hay cosas básicas. Okay. Pero super básicas. Uh, does she, does she work in the same company as you? Uh, 
Yes, she, she, she does. does. She, she does. does. Uh, does she have two eyes? Uh, yes, she has. Yes, she does. Porque has cambiado. Does, does she have a scucha? Does she have? Do you have? Do you? Does he? Do I? Have. Have is un verbo normal, como do you touch? Do you teach? Do you drink? Does Nacho drink? Now, does Monica have one nose? Yes, she, she does. Yes, she does. Does she have two ears? Yes, she does. Does she have perfect English? Uh, she. Yeah. Yes, she does. <laughs> really? Okay. Does she speak well? Uh, yes, uh, she speaks well. She speaks? She speaks well. All right. Pues conviértela en tu profe. Yes. Okay. Empezando hoy. All right, but we're coming back. Pobre Julián, le voy a dar mucha caña hoy para que se mentalice. Porque y Nacho también, ¿eh? No puede, Nacho no puede tirar la primera piedra, ¿eh? Aquí no. No, he can't throw the first stone. Uh, but I'll be back, and I'll be back with Julian and with Nacho in just a few minutes. So please, don't go away. No te alejes demasiado, porque empezamos de nuevo en cinco minutos, ¿ok? Bye-bye. Pronunciation. As soon as. As soon as. I'll call them as soon as I have time. I'll call them as soon as I have time. We'll leave as soon as it gets dark. We'll leave as soon as it gets dark. As soon as you've finished, you can go. As soon as you've finished, you can go. As soon as. As soon as. Pronunciation. Welcome back. The One Minute in English class. Ah, oh, this is, I have two arms, one and two. This arm, I am bending. In fact, I can bend both arms. <laughs> I can do, I can bend both arms at the same time. I bend my arms at this joint, articulación, which is called my elbow. Okay, and I'm, I can bend my arm this way. I can't bend my arm backwards. Okay, most people can't do that. Most people bend their arm this way. I bend my fingers, I can bend. Now, some things I can't bend. This pen, oh, I can bend it a little. But if I bend it too much, it could break. Okay? Also, there's a river. El Ricodo del Rio is the bend. The river bend. The bend in the river. To bend. Now, don't confuse to bend. Que es doblar cosas duras o cosas corporales with to fold. Also, you say doblar. Doblar papel is to fold. Doblar tela, to fold. If I wash this shirt and I iron it, then I fold it and put it into the drawer. I fold it. You fold paper. You bend harder objects. Superman can bend iron bars. I can't. I can bend my arms, but I can't bend iron bars. And I'm going to bend your will. To, help, to make you learn English, I hope. See you in a few minutes. See you another day. The Born Challenge! Which one is correct? You haven't got all day. Come on, come on. The correct answer is... B. Where are you waiting for me? Well, right now we're in a sweet old monastery. It's got cloisters and uh, cool retablos and... Uh, a little church and everything. It's actually a hotel. So we've got really nice rooms. We've all got our own rooms, which I wasn't expecting. That's really cool. So you've got your privacy. But at the same time, there's general meeting areas where you find everybody and you can just go around, talk to whoever you want. There's a plethora of different people. There's all sorts of people. There's obviously Spaniards, but Irish and uh, American, British, Australian, Kiwis, uh, all sorts of people. And you actually develop pretty cool relationships. The Born Challenge!
What's the missing word? You don't know, do you? <laughs> chop chop! The correct answer is... B. We were responsible for the children. Hello and welcome back. Welcome to another One Minute English class. To borrow and to lend. It's interesting, in Spanish you say prestar dinero. O tomar dinero prestado. Cuando tú prestas, you lend. Cuando pides o tomas prestado, you borrow. It's interesting, in English, we use the verb to borrow a lot. And you don't have a verb in Spanish for to borrow. You say, oye, me dejas un lápiz un momento. In English we say, can I borrow your pencil for a minute? Can I borrow a can I borrow one of your shirts? Oh, me dejas una camisa tuya para para hoy. Can I borrow? When you go to the bank, you can do many different types of transactions. One transaction is to borrow money. The bank lends you money. The bank gives you a loan. In essence, lending you money and you are borrowing money from the bank. The bank is lending money to you. If I need a pencil, I can borrow a pencil from you, and you lend the pencil to me. If I borrow money, I have a debt, money I owe to another person or entity, if I borrow money. If I lend money, the other person or entity has a debt towards me. They owe me money. There's a lot of interesting vocabulary with lending and borrowing, debts and credits. We'll come back another day and continue with this subject. Pronunciation. Can we? Can we? Can we trust you? Can we trust you? Can we make a difference? Can we make a difference? Can we let them go? Can we let them go? Can we? Can we? Pronunciation. Hello and welcome to a new program. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. I'm glad to see that you're watching this program more often because you and me together, we're going to create a symbiosis that will transcend so many different objectives. And, of course, you will improve your English mientras tanto. In the meantime, you will be improving your English simply by watching. Simply by watching. Y puedo decir lo mismo quitando el by. Simply watching. Simplemente viendo este programa, sin prestar demasiada atención, incluso. Dos formas. Simply watching or simply by watching. El by, ¿por qué lo insertamos? Pues es casi como decir, mediante la, el visionado. Simply by watching this program, your English will improve. It will penetrate through your pores, los poros del cuerpo. And you will assimilate the language without realizing it. But that requires that you spend a lot of time in front of the TV, watching me and watching other colleagues of mine here on Aprende Inglés TV. This is the only 24-hour-a-day television channel in the world designed to improve you. This is an educational channel. This channel is not for entertainment, although we try to entertain at the same time as we educate. This channel is giving you something very valuable. This channel is giving you something that is worth a lot. It's not only entertainment and relaxation, but it's education of the mind and giving you tools, herramientas, to help you in the future. So, um, and I don't want any criticisms, okay? No de críticas. Uh, because this is free, you're not paying. And you have an expression in Spanish, a caballo regalado no se le mira el diente. And in English, we have the same expression. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, so if you don't like this show, just switch to another channel. That's fine, but don't criticize it because it's free. The only cost is your time, okay? Which is valuable, I imagine. But 
knowing English is even more valuable, in my opinion, than your time, okay? And if you spend your time improving your English, it is time well spent. Okay, now I have two lovely ladies whom I think you know, whom, whom I think you know, because they've been here before. I think this is their second time with me. Uh, Mercedes, am I right? How are you? Yeah, you're right. I'm fine, thank you. And Susanna, hello. Hello. <clears throat> By the way, bring me the camera. Just before the start of the program, they had a fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they said, I want to sit there. And she said, I want to sit there. This is my good side. This is my bad side. <laughs> and I said, eh? don't move. You'll stay there. But after the break, in about 22 or 23 minutes, okay, we'll swing. Okay, we'll give Mercedes the chance to sit on my left, and we'll give Susanna the opportunity or the chance to sit on my right, so we can avoid fights. That's what you call a Salomonic decision. Okay, do you agree, Susanna? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah, did you complain before the program? Yes, I did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now ask me if there was ask me <clears throat> if there was a civil war in Italy last century. Was there a civil war in Italy last century? Well, last century was the 20th century, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, not formally, there wasn't, but really there was. Uh, because the period, the late years of Mussolini, the last six, seven years of Mussolini, especially the ones that coincided with the Second World War, uh, the divisions in Italy were so great, that it, and there was so much violence and so many problems that some people consider it almost the equivalent of a civil war. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, there wasn't formally a civil war in Italy. Last century. Ask you if there was a civil war the century before. Was there a um, civil war the century before? Uh, yes and no. Uh, there really, Italy didn't exist as a country the mm -hmm. century a century before until about 1865 or 1870 after Garibaldi and his troops, they united it under Victor Emmanuel to create what is Italy, okay? Uh, and that can, is often considered a civil war, mm -hmm. but it really it was a war of unification, all right? So in my opinion, personally, there wasn't a civil war in the 19th century in Italy. Ask me if there was a civil war in the United States in the 19th century. Was there a civil war in the United States in the 19th century? Yes, there was. Ask me how long it lasted. How long did it last? Good. Repeat. How long did it last? Did he or did, did it? Did it. Did it. How long did it last? Es que la forma en que has dicho did he suena a did he. Mm -hmm. Él, un, un hombre. How long did it last? For example, ¿cuánto tiempo duró Pepe en ese trabajo? ¿Cuánto tiempo duró él? How long did he last? How long did he last? Mm -hmm. Did he? Do a did he did he dum did he do? How long, how long did he last? Now, tratando de ser una guerra civil, how long did it? Did it? Did it? Como hacen las ranas. Did it? Did it? <laughs> How long did it last? How long did it last? How long did it last? Did it? Did it? All right. How long did it last? Uh, it lasted four and a half years. Ask me. Tell Tell Mercedes. Ask me when it started. Ask him when it started. When it? When it started. Tengo que trabajarte el it. it. <laughs> when did it start? It started in 1861. Mm -hmm. Tell her to ask me when it ended. <coughs> Ask him when it ended. When did it end? When did he or did it? Did it. When did it end? All right. When did it end? Cuando terminó la guerra civil americana. It ended in 1865. Uh, tell her to ask me how many young men died in that conflict. Ask him how many young men died in that conflict. How many young men? Young men? Young, young men. Young. Young, young men. Young. Young men. Men died in that war. Okay, six hundred thousand. A lot. <clears throat> yeah, six hundred thousand. All right, and ask me what the causes of the war were. What were the causes of the war? Many, but basically economic. Basically, mm -hmm. uh, no. The basic um, reason for the American Civil War was the. Uh, a decision whether central government or dispersed in a more federal system. Okay. And so it was, a, it was a based on who made the decisions concerning economic activity, Washington or every, the capital of every state, mm -hmm. okay? 
And the slave question was an important question, but it was secondary. Okay, ask me if there was a civil war in Spain in the 19th century. Was there a civil war in Spain in the 19th century? Well, there were several civil wars. If you consider the guerras carlistas as civil mm -hmm. wars, there were several, quite a few. And also the Napoleonic period could be considered a bit like a civil war because there were so many, it was quite a conflictive century, mm -hmm. okay? The 19th century in Spain. Okay, uh, ask me if the Virgin Mary is a central figure in the Hindu religion. Is the Virgin Mary a central figure in the Hindu religion? No, she's not. She is not a figure at all. Uh -huh. Que yo sepa? No, that as, I know of, as, as far, far as, as I know. As far as I know, uh, she is not a central figure in the Hindu religion, although I have heard rumors uh, that the Virgin Mary died on her way to India. Mm. Yeah, have you heard that? No, haven't. The most recent, well, rumors, it's, they're not rumors, Certain hypotheses, theories, okay, mm -hmm. say that um, between the age of 12 and 29, Jesus of Nazareth was in Kashmir, mm -hmm. in the north of India, mm -hmm. and that he went there with his mother when he was 12 years old, and she died along the way, okay? And that he spent his years and his, learned his, philo consolidated his philosophy of life and religion in India. Mm -hmm. Ask me if I believe that story. Do you believe that story? No, I don't. But it could be true. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It could be true. All right. Ask Mercedes if she has heard that story. Have you heard that story? No, I haven't. Okay. But ask me if the Virgin Mary is a, is a central figure in the Christian religion. Is the Virgin Mary a central figure in the Christian religion? Of course she is, yes. Uh, she's more important than Catholic. But ask me if the Virgin Mary is, a, is an important figure in the Protestant religions, too. Is the Virgin Mary an important figure in the Protestant religion, too? Uh, yes, she is. Ask me if, she, ask me if the Protestants believe in, imma, in the Immaculate Conception. Do the Protestants believe in the Immaculate Conception? According to the d Protestant doctrine, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Ask me if the Protestants believe in the Confession. Do Protestants believe in Confession? Yes, they do but not through a priest. Mm. It's direct Directly. with God. Is the most Protestant denominations mm -hmm. believe it's between you and God, okay? Ask you if the Protestants believe in the resurrection. Do the Protestants believe in the resurrection? Yes, they do. They believe in the resurrection. Okay, ask me if the Protestants believe in eternal life. <laughs> do the Protestants believe in Protestants. the... Protestants. Protestants believe in the eternal in eternal in eternal life yes they do it's all the same but really basically the it's the beliefs mm -hmm. are the same between the the different religions mm -hmm. all right ask me what language the people speak in south africa what language do uh, do people in south africa speak all right <laughs> uh, they speak english and afrikaans and maybe zulu Zulu. -y. i don't know zulu language i don't know but basically english and afrikaans and ask me what afrikaans is what's an african no, what is Afrikaans? What is Afrikaans? Okay. It's a language that mm. combines English, Dutch, and German, basically. Mm. Okay, I think. I'm not an expert. But I think Dutch and German predominate in mm. that language. Okay? Ask me what people speak Afrikaans. What people, what people <coughs> speak Afrikaans? <coughs> a lot of people in South Africa, especially in the north, in Transvaal, in the north of South mm. Africa, who are, were originally Dutch, Okay, <coughs> and uh, ask me if the Dutch had problems with the English in South Africa. Do the Dutch did? Did the Dutch have problems with the English? Problems. In, did the Dutch have problems with the English in South Africa? Yes, they did. Ask me if there was a war. Was there a war? Yes, there was. Ask me when the war took place. When did the war took place? Take place. When did the war take place? I think it took place at the end of the 19th century. Ask me how long it lasted. How long did it last? I think it lasted two years, but I'm not sure. Ask me what famous person was involved in that war. What famous person was involved in that war? Konuve. Involved. Involved in that war. Masuve. Involved. In that war. Involved. Involved. Mira, las di los dientes la las enseño. Involved. Involved. Uh, what famous person? Winston Churchill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ask me who was famous before that war. 
Was he famous before that war? No, he wasn't. Ask me if he became famous during that war. Did he became famous? Como? Did he become famous after that war? Du well, during and after, oh. yes, he became famous. Ask me why. Why did he became famous? What did? He, sorry, why did he become famous? All right. <laughs> <laughs> he became famous because he escaped from a Dutch, well, a Boer uh, prison, mm -hmm. in a very interesting way. All right, and he became famous because of it. Ask me how old he was at that time. How old was he at that time? Around 20 years old. Mm -hmm. He was very young, or 22, 23. Okay, ask me what, do you remember the, you don't remember that war? Mm, no. Have you ever heard of La Guerra de los Boers? No. The I Boers haven't. War? No, I haven't. Okay, it was a strong war mm -hmm. between the Dutch settlers, colonizadores, mm -hmm. and the English settlers in the South, South Africa. Africa. Mm -hmm. And ask me who won the war? Who won the war? The Dutch. Uh, the English, sorry. The <laughs> English. The English won the war. Okay. Ask me if I will make a million dollars before the end of this month. Will you make? A million dollars? Okay. Will you make a million dollars before the end of this month? No, I won't. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Not before the end of the year either, okay? Uh, ask me if I have ever made a million dollars in one year. Have you ever made a million dollars in one <clears throat> day? In one day? No, never, never, never. In one day? No. In one year. In one year. <laughs> Too late. Ask me if I've ever made a million dollars in one year. Have you ever, have you ever made a million dollars in one year? No, never. Not yet, not yet. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows? Maybe someday. Mm -hmm. All right, and ask me if I've ever made a, th a hundred thousand dollars in one year. Have you ever made a hundred thousand dollars in one year? Well, now, with the dollar so cheap, Compared to the euros, yes. But if the dollar were at a d correct parity, mm -hmm. no. I've never made a I've never made a hundred thousand euros in one year. Uh, but now, ask me how much a hundred thousand euros is in dollars. How much is a hundred thousand dollars in euros? euros? Ah. Ah, you, first, uh, euros okay. and dollars. Uh, yes, a hundred thousand dollars in euros. How much is it? A hundred thousand dollars in euros is about sixty-six thousand euros. Uh, ask me if the parity is completely out of line. Is the parity completely out completely. of line? Completely. Completely out of line. Yes, it is. Mm. Ask me if everything is cheap in the United States now. Is everything cheap in the United States now? If you have euros in your pocket, <laughs> yes. Everything is cheap. Ask Susan if she's ever been to the States. Mm. Have you ever been to the States? Mm, no, I haven't. Ask her if she would like to go someday. Would you like to go someday? Yes, I would. Ask her what part of the states she would like to visit first. Which part of the United States? Prefer what? what? What part of the United States would you like to go? Well, maybe the Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains? Mm -hmm. Ask her if she has ever seen the Alps. Have you ever seen the Alps? No, I haven't. Ask her if she has seen the Pyrenees. Have you seen the Pyrenees? Yes, I have. Ask her if she's seen the mountains in Asturias and Cantabria. Have you seen the mountains in Asturias and Cantabria? Yes, I have. Well, then you don't need to go to the Rockies. The Rockies are very beautiful. Much, much higher. <coughs> no, not no? well. Higher than the Picos de Europa? Yes. How high are the Picos de Europa? What's the altitude? Mm -mm, it's know? about 2,000. Oh, I think it's more. 2,600, well, maybe. Maybe close to 3,000, I think. It rings a bell. Yeah. Mm. Okay, the Rockies are higher, but yes and no, because the Rockies start at 5,000 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. uh, let's, let's, let's put it into meters. Denver, Colorado is called the Mile High City. The Mile High City. Mm -hmm. Because it's exactly, the altitude of Denver is 5,280 feet, and that's exactly one mile. Mm -hmm. All right, now Denver is the beginning of the Rockies, and it's abrupt. Mm -hmm. Okay? But when you go to Denver, it's flat, like this table, except that it's like this. But you don't notice, but it's mm -hmm. continually, from the Mississippi River, 3,000 kilometers before, it's slowly going up, 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 up. And when you reach Denver, 3,000 kilometers away, or 2,500 kilometers away, it's at one mile, mm -hmm. which is 1,760 yards, which means about 1,600 meters. So the Rocky Mountains are about 4,000 meters, 4,000 meters, yeah. Yeah, 4,400 meters perhaps, but it starts at 1,600. So they're high, but they begin from a high place. Now the Picos de Europa, you go to the other side, it's the Bay of Biscay. Como se llama el Mar Cantabrico? El Mar Cantabrico? In English. 
de Cantabrian Sea? No. <laughs> la Bahía de Bas Biscaya. Ah. The Bay. The Bay of Biscay. The Bay of Biscay. Yes. Now, the Bay of Biscay, of course, is sea level. And if you're in Asturias and you go from sea level, you go up to the top of those picos, mm -hmm. it's tremendous, the, uh, the change. The change. Mm -hmm. So, although the mountains in Asturias are not as high as the Rockies, the abrupt change could be the same mm -hmm. or maybe even more. Mm -hmm. And the impre it's very impressive. If you go to the States, I would recommend other areas, although the Rockies are very beautiful. I mm. would recommend you go to the deserts of Arizona, Nevada, Utah, mm -hmm. New Mexico. It's very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Also the Northeast, Boston, New York, in that area. Mm -hmm. New England is very good. Mm -hmm. Ask her if she's planning to go to the States someday. Are you planning to go to the States someday? Yes, I am. All right. Ask her if she's planning to go this year. Are you, going to, uh, are you planning to go this year? Well, not this year, next Ask year. Ask if she would go if I invited her. Would you go if he invited you? Of course I would. Yeah, and uh, ask her if um, ask her if she would like to cross the country in a rented car. <laughs> would you like to cross the country in a rented car? Uh, yes, I, yes, I would. All right, tell her to ask me how long, it would, how long it would take us to cross the United States by car. Ask him how long would it take you to cross how long it would take you to cross the country by car? Yeah. How long would it take us to, to cross the country by car? It would take us probably, well, it depends on how often we want to stop along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would take us about 10 days. Only mm -hmm. 10 days? <laughs> Only. <laughs> well, I've heard, I've heard uh, longer. Of, well, it depends on how much you stop. If you want to stop and visit every little museum mm -hmm. in every little no. village, no. okay? No. <laughs> now, if you want to stop and see Niagara Falls, if you want to spend quality time spending mm -hmm. an entire day, it can take one month mm -hmm. to cross the United That's States. That's what I heard. <laughs> Ask me how long it takes to drive nonstop across the United States. How long does it take to cross nonstop across the United States? No, no me ha gustado to cross across. Oh. <laughs> How long does it take to cross the U.S. Uh -huh. nonstop? Repeat. How long does it take to cross the U.S. nonstop? Uh, if it takes five days, five days to go from New York to Los Angeles, for example, mm -hmm. uh, because it, people do it often. Ask me why people often cross the United States by car. Why people? Do why do? Why do people often cross the United States by car? Uh, because they are paid to do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. For example, if I live, you, okay, in the United States there's a lot of mobil mobility. People move. Mm -hmm. And it's quite common, I mean, probably every day, somebody who lives in San Francisco, Sacramento, Los Angeles, or San Diego, or Portland, Oregon, or Seattle, Washington, on the Pacific Coast, probably ev at least every day, 10 people are moving, only 10, of course, mm -hmm. but that's every day to a city on the East Coast, Miami, Atlanta, which is near the coast, or Washington, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, etc. And because they are transferred? Yeah, they are transferred yeah. by their job by or their something. Jobs. And so you, you have two cars. Your family has two cars. Okay, good. Now, what they usually do is, of course, all the furniture goes in a moving van. Mm -hmm. Camión de, de mudanzas. We say a moving mm -hmm. van, van, como si fuera furgoneta. Moving van. And they fly to the new house they have rented or bought in Boston, New York, mm -hmm. etc. And they pay somebody to drive the two cars mm -hmm. across. Mm -hmm. And this happens often, every day. At least one person is crossing the United States to, in order to transport the car itself. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It's a long it way. But for example, imagine, Susana, that you need to move from Madrid to Moscow. Okay? And that you reorganize the moving of all your furniture into a nice flat in the center of Moscow. And then you personally, you physically will go. All right? You have a car. And you, you fly. And you tell me, uh, you pay me uh, three, 500 euros and I'll drive your car to Moscow. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to drive so far. Mm -hmm. How long does it take to drive from Madrid to Moscow? I don't know. Probably One takes about month? four days. No. 
Four days. To drive from Madrid to Moscow in four well, days. Well, for you, maybe. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> Ask me how far I can drive on the first day. How far can you drive on the first day? Well, on the first day, I can drive from Madrid to, to Perpignan. Paris. To Perpignan, for example. No, Paris is a bit it's too far. Yeah. Paris would be 14 or 15 hours. I would drive from here to Perpignan. Ask me where I would go the following day. Where would you go the following day? I would go from Perpignan probably to Berlin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or maybe that's too far. Oh, that's to too Munich. far. <laughs> to Munich. <laughs> <laughs> to Munich. Ask me where I would go on the third day. Where would you go to the, fir on the, on third. the third day? I would go from Munich or Berlin to Vilnius. Where is Vilnius? Vilnius? Where is Vilnius? Armenia. You don't know. Armenia? No. <laughs> Armenia no. That's <laughs> no. very far south. That's the Caucasus. No. Ask me where Vilnius is. What is Vilnius? Vilnius. Vilnius. It's the capital of Lithuania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> and then the final day from Vilnius to, to, um, Moscow. to Moscow. I would probably mm -hmm. stop in Warsaw, mm -hmm. Varsovia. But Vilnius is another three hours. I'm probably apurando. Wow. <laughs> and then I, but I think it could be done in four days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you like, you ask her if so? she would like to, to make that drive. Mercedes, could you like to make that drive? Good, repeat please. Would you like to make that drive? In four days? No. Okay, good. <laughs> would you like, good, uh, the, the, would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Yeah, would you? Would you like to make that, ask me if I would like to try to do that. Would you like to try to do that? Of course I would. I'd love to. Mm -hmm. All right. Ask me how much time we have left. How much time do we have left? We have one minute. And then you can switch places, okay? <laughs> now, ask me if Napoleon knew how to play rugby. Uh, did Napoleon knew, uh, know how to play rugby? I imagine he didn't. Ask me if rugby existed as a sport in Napoleonic times. Did rugby exist as a sport in Napoleonic times? No, it didn't. Napoleon times. Napoleonic. Napoleonic times. Tiempos. In the época napoleonica. Mm -hmm. oh, no, it didn't. So I imagine he never had the opportunity to mm -hmm. play rugby. Besides, he didn't have time. Strange man, Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Strange man. Very, very strange. Yeah. Very interesting person to study. Strange. But we'll talk about, maybe in the next hour, we'll mm -hmm. talk about Napoleon. We'll be back in just a few minutes, okay? So don't go away. Don't go too far away. Be back as soon as possible. Because in five minutes, estamos al pie del cañón de nuevo. Con el inglés a tope, okay? English elevated to the tenth power in the next half hour. Okay. The Bourne Challenge. Which one is correct? Quickly. You're running out of time. The correct answer is... A. You've already done it. Hello again. Welcome back to the One Minute English Class. Uh, to tell you the truth, I would rather not be here eh? because uh, they caught me and put me in front of the camera. I was planning to have a coffee, but now I have to teach an English class. My God. Uh, to have a coffee, not to take a coffee. To take a coffee city, llevar un café de un sitio a otro. When we eat or drink, we always use the verb to have. To have lunch, to have breakfast, to have dinner, to have a drink, to have a Coke, to have a beer, to have a whiskey. To have. What would you like to have? Hey, let's have a drink. Now, to take means llevar de un sitio a otro, but it, to take for consuming is only for medicine, medication to take an aspirin, to take medicine, to take cough, <coughs> cough syrup. So, remember, to take is only ingerir. The rest of the time, please, we only use have. Please don't say, I would like to take a beer, because it doesn't make sense. Uno diría, ¿a dónde lo quieres llevar? Where do you want to take the beer? Okay, no, we want to have a beer, to have a whiskey to have a glass of wine, to have a drink, to have breakfast, to have lunch, to have dinner, okay? To have something to eat. I need to have something to eat, I'm hungry. So I think I'll leave now and go and have my coffee, okay? 
así. The Born Challenge. What's the missing word? You haven't got all day. Hurry up. The correct answer is... C. I want to focus on the exam. The Born Challenge. What's the missing word? You haven't got all day. Hurry up. The correct answer is... B. He has many objectives. Pronunciation. Must have. Must have. You must have it. You must have it. It must have snowed. It must have snowed. We must have a try. We must have a try. Must have. Must have. Pronunciation. <laughs>